In this video, you're gonna see something most DIY smoke bomb videos never show. Six different smoke bomb projects, each one built with real ingredients and real results. One after another, you'll watch how different setups, colors, and containers create massive colorful clouds of smoke. But before we get to the wild builds, we're starting with the foundation. The first project that proves how powerful your smoke can be when you mix it right. If you've ever watched a smoke bomb video online and thought, I wanna make something like that, you're not alone. The problem is, most DIY smoke bombs out there burn way too fast, barely smoke, or just end in disappointment. But when you follow the right process, using the proper ingredients, good ratios, and a clean build, you can get smoke bombs that actually perform. In this first project, you're gonna build five smoke bombs using nothing more than soda cans and a tested smoke formula. And when it's done, you'll see a full rainbow of colors pouring out in thick clouds. Next, you're placing a small tube inside each can. This is where the smoke powder will go. You can use either cardboard or plastic tubes, whichever fits best. Once the tube is inside, you glue it securely so it stays fixed while burning. After all five cans are prepped, you're ready to mix the ingredients. Now it's time to create the actual smoke bomb mix. You'll be combining five dry ingredients. 36% smoke dye for color 27% potassium chlorate, as the oxidizer 18% lactose for fuel. 16% magnesium, carbonate for burn control, and 3% baking soda to reduce burn intensity. Make sure the powder is fine and well mixed, this affects how evenly and cleanly it burns. Now here's something you don't always see in other videos. A lot of creators show the results, but they skip the actual recipe. They'll say add some dye or use a little oxidizer, but they never show you the full breakdown, and because of that most viewers are left guessing, mixing the wrong amounts and getting weak smoke or wasted ingredients. But this channel doesn't hide the process. Every project, every formula, everything you see, it's all shown step by step. That's because if you want your results to look like ours, you need the real details. So take your time with this mix. Make sure the powder is fully blended, with no chunks or clumps. If it's not smooth, it won't burn right, no matter how well you build the rest. And once the mix is ready, that's when the build really starts coming together. With the powder ready, you start filling each tube inside the cans. Scoop slowly, tapping as you go to settle the mix. You don't want it packed too tight or too loose, just firm enough to stay in place. Now the color mix goes into each tube, one for green, one for red, then blue, yellow, and violet. Pouring them like this always feels a bit like loading fireworks, but with way more color payoff. It's a simple step, but it sets the stage for something pretty unexpected, because even though every mix follows the exact same formula, each color still burns just a little differently. Some rise faster, some linger longer, and some blend into crazy combos you don't see coming. And that's part of what makes this so fun to watch. In just a moment, you'll see all five firing at the same time, but something weird always happens when blue meets yellow. It's subtle at first, but once the wind picks up, you'll definitely notice. All five smoke bombs are burning now, and honestly, this is one of those moments that's just fun to watch. The colors roll out slow at first, then they start mixing, twisting, doing things you didn't expect. You think red will be the brightest, but then blue takes over, yellow hangs low, green drifts high, and violet. It kind of just floats in the middle. This part isn't about showing off the formula, it's about seeing how it actually plays out in real life. And yeah, a lot of videos show the mix, light the fuse, and move on. But staying here watching how each color reacts, that's where the real payoff is. And just when you think it's done, one last puff of color pushes through the smoke, like the scene doesn't want to end just yet, but we're just getting started. Because up next in this video, we're building a smoke bomb inside a watermelon, and if you've never seen that before, trust me you'll want to stick around. So here's something you probably haven't seen before. We're making a smoke bomb inside a watermelon. First I cut off the top and scoop out all the red part. Yeah, I saved it in a clean container and yes, I'm definitely eating that later. Most people would never think to use fruit for something like this, but that's exactly why it's worth trying. The outer shell is thick enough to hold the mix, and once the smoke starts pouring out, the whole thing looks kind of insane. Before moving on, I take a moment to dry the inside of the watermelon. You want it completely dry so the powder doesn't clump or lose its effect. Then I'm cutting four holes around the sides, one for each color to shoot out. It looks strange now, but in a second it'll start to make sense. I'll be honest. I didn't expect this to work the first time I tried it. It felt like one of those looks cool in your head. Total mess in real life ideas. But somehow, it actually turned out better than planned. And the best part? I still have no idea why the blue smoke always takes over. 
If you figure it out before I do, let me know in the comments. Now this is the part where everything starts to come together. I'm mixing five ingredients, and while it might look simple, how you mix them makes a big difference in how the smoke performs. You've got the smoke dye for color, potassium chlorate to drive the burn, lactose for fuel, magnesium carbonate to slow it down a bit, and just a touch of baking soda to balance the heat. The ratio has to be just right, because even a small change can turn a smooth burn into a total mess. And yeah, you've probably seen some creators skip past this part, but this is where the results are made. Here's the exact mix we use. 36% smoke dye for vibrant color, 27% potassium chlorate to fuel the burn, 18% lactose as the main fuel source, 16% magnesium carbonate to slow and smooth the reaction, 3% baking soda to reduce burn intensity. We're firing them up, blue, red, and yellow, all at once. It happens fast, but if you watch closely, you'll see each color fight for space. One might take over, or they might blend into something totally unexpected. The fuses are lit, smoke's already pouring out, and this part always feels a bit unpredictable. Some creators skip straight to the big moment, but you're seeing the full thing, just as it unfolds. And in a second you'll notice, even though the recipe stays the same, each smoke bomb acts a little differently. Just when you think you've seen how big these smoke bombs can get, we try something completely different. In this next build, it's all about one color, green, but the way we set it up changes everything. Three smoke bombs packed into sharp orange tubes. Not just for looks. Those tubes help compress and direct the smoke. You might expect a normal burn, steady and even, but the moment they're lit the pressure kicks in, and therefore the smoke explodes out in one thick rolling wave. It's wild. Each tube releases the same green mix, but no two burns look exactly alike. You could follow the exact same recipe at home, and still your results might vary. That's part of the fun. The best part, the best part, this setup isn't just for show, it actually performs. And in a few seconds, you'll see just how much smoke you can get out of three compact tubes, when everything lines up just right. Mixing green smoke isn't just about throwing powders together, it's about balance. Too much of one, and the whole thing can backfire. Right now you're seeing me combine five key ingredients, and each one has a job to do. The green dye, that's what brings the color to life. But without potassium chloride, you wouldn't get ignition. Then there's lactose, the fuel, and magnesium carbonate, which controls the burn. You add just a bit of baking soda to smooth it out, therefore keeping the smoke dense and slow. I've tested this exact ratio dozens of times. And even though it looks simple, the real trick is how fine and evenly mixed it is. Because when we light this, you'll see what happens if everything is done right. With the powder mix ready, now comes one of the most satisfying parts, inserting the fuses. It seems simple, but how you place them matters more than you'd think. If the fuse is too loose, it won't catch properly. But if it's packed too tight, the fire can't reach the mix fast enough, therefore timing everything just right is the goal. Now while the fuses are going in, I'm also starting work on the outer tubes. I'm using plain cardboard sleeves this time. But here's the twist, I'm painting them bright orange. Not because it affects performance, but because it makes the entire setup look way more fun. Plus there's something oddly satisfying about turning a basic tube into something that looks like it belongs in a fireworks lab. And here's a funny part, most people think you need fancy casings for great smoke, but when you see these fire, you'll know that's not true. These simple tubes, dressed in orange, are about to put on a serious show. We're almost ready to fire this up, but while we set the last piece in place, here's something worth knowing. On most channels, you just see the big pop, the smoke, the fire, the wow. But here at Dominate Labs, we actually take you inside the build. No secrets, no skipping, just real behind the scenes of what makes it work. So while this might look like a quick video, you're actually getting the kind of detail that other creators leave out. And when these go off, you'll see why that matters. And just like that, they're all going. Three green smoke bombs burning almost perfectly in sync. Same mix, same setup, and you can see how steady it is. But here's the twist. Even when things look identical, little variables still matter. Maybe a fuse sits tighter. Maybe the air hits one first. Tiny shifts can lead to big changes. That's why we always show the full process here on Dominate Labs. Not just the final boom, but what made it happen. Because once you understand the build, watching the result gets a whole lot more satisfying.
those last three? Quick punchy and fun to watch. But now, it's time for something way bigger. This next one isn't about variety. It's about volume. Just one red smoke bomb. But we packed it deep with a dense mix and extended burn. And here's the fun part, it might look simple, but the effect is anything but. Once this lights, the entire area disappears into red. And while the others lasted a few moments, this one just keeps going. You'll see what I mean, because we're lighting it right now. Most people never show you the real formula. But if you want smoke like this, you need the right mix. And yes, we're giving you every single part of it. Here's the full mix we use for our colored smoke bombs. 36% smoke dye, that's where the color comes from. 27% potassium chlorate, the oxidizer that makes it burn. 18% lactose, acts as the fuel. 16% magnesium carbonate, to control the burn rate. And 3% baking soda, just to keep the reaction stable. That's it, simple, clean, and it works every time. You ever try something that totally flopped, but somehow pulled you in even deeper? That was us, the first time we made a smoke bomb. We thought we had it right. The mix looked solid, everything was packed tight, but then we lit it, and it just fizzled. One little puff, and nothing else. You'd think we'd give up, but that's the thing, it didn't work, so we had to figure out why. We tweaked the mix, changed the container, even tried painting tubes just to make him look cooler. But every time something went wrong, we learned something new. Therefore what you're seeing now isn't just a better smoke bomb, it's the result of every fail, every almost and every test we didn't post. And trust me, when you see what happens in the next build, you'll know why we keep doing this. Alright, now we're mixing the powder for the final bomb. Blue, red, yellow, and green. These colors turned out brighter than anything we've made before, like we didn't expect them to pop this much on the last round. Now we've probably said the ingredient mix way too many times by now, but if you missed it just scroll back a little. It's all there step by step, what matters here is how we combine it. The balance, the texture, therefore this is where the real difference shows. Once the powder's done we start filling each container, and after that, well let's just say the ending is worth it. Each container gets its own color. Packed in carefully, just the way we've learned over time, the better the fill, the better the burn. But it's not just about stuffing powder, it's about getting the timing right between all of them. And now that the mix is in, we're about to start inserting the fuses. You're watching the final fire of this video. But in a way it's the most important one, because right here, you're seeing the moment it all comes together. The color, the timing, the way each part reacts in the air, it's no longer just powder and tubes. You probably noticed it already. This one burns bigger, smoother, louder than the rest. But here's the thing, it didn't start like that. Our first attempt, total mess. One fuse wouldn't catch, one color never showed, and we even lit one while it was still damp. Therefore what you're seeing now, is the result of every mistake that came before it. You've seen the ingredients, you've seen how we build these, but you haven't seen the part where we test 10 times just to get one that feels right. That's the part you don't always see in short videos. The trial and error, the stuff that never makes it to camera. You can probably feel it though. When a smoke bomb works this well, you know it didn't just happen by accident. And maybe just maybe, you're starting to wonder how your own version would look. That's the fun of it. You don't need to be an expert, you just need a reason to try. We're not trying to go viral here, we're just showing you what's possible when you get curious. And when you get curious things start to happen. This may be the final smoke bomb in today's video, but for you it might just be the first. Thanks for watching, seriously. If you enjoyed this there's a lot more coming, so stick around we're just getting started.